Alrighty, what is going on guys? John D Games here, and today I'm going to be showing off tools that I use primarily for map making purposes. I can see most of these tools being used and being pretty helpful if you are specifically a map maker, but there are also some tools in this list that are going to be for the casual player as well. And I just wanted to note that this isn't going to be a tutorial for any of these programs, but simply just showing off how they can be utilized and pretty much just making the word of their existence known. And yeah, if you want to actually see a tutorial on any of these in the future, feel free to request them in the comments. But yeah, um, I can see these tools being incredibly helpful and I'm just going to run through and check off all of these and show you what they do. So the first one we have up here is Chunky. Chunky is a program that is specifically made for rendering out images and making them look so beautiful. It's as almost if you were using shaders for a single screenshot, and it just makes the world look so much better. And I can see this being really, really helpful when it comes to thumbnails. And yeah, it's been one of my favorite programs. I've created some of my favorite images of all time. You might even recognize some of them. And yeah, and you might be asking, well, how does this relate to map making? And to that, I would say, promotion. You can use images from this thing to promote the heck out of it and I am sure that people will be, their eye will be caught. The second program on the list is image to map x and pretty much this is really helpful especially when it comes to custom posters and little walls and paintings that you would want to make. So pretty much using this you can use pretty much any image that you have and turn that into a map that you would have in Minecraft. And it even has a feature where you can import an image and I would recommend it be square, but you can import an image and you can even cut it up into sections so you can place a bunch of different maps next to each other. And it is really, really cool. I've used this a lot and it's just a really awesome tool that I thought should be known more. The next tool on the chopping block is something that I can guarantee you, you probably know, MC Edit. It is one of the most well-known tools out there, probably because of just popularity by people like Seth Bling. Seth Bling has been making a bunch of filters and like, I don't even know how many he has, but it's dozens upon dozens of filters that could really, really help out a map maker. And while 1.7 and 1.8 are integrating all this stuff into like vanilla Minecraft, MC Edit is still a very, very, very helpful tool. I use it quite often to change the biomes of areas and to pretty much just like lay down schematics that pretty much just vanilla Minecraft can't do. And yeah, it's just really awesome. I would recommend you go and play around with it because I cannot describe even close to what it can do just in a video. The next tool up, I will admittedly say right away, I do not know a whole lot about Mineways, but Mineways is the next tool and pretty much what this does is it'll take a world that is existing or just an area of a world and you can actually import it into programs such as Cinema 4D. I might be able to import it to Blender. That is just speculation. But yeah, like I said, I haven't worked with this a whole lot, but it is pretty cool and I felt like I should mention it. I can pretty much take any world or any build and import it into Cinema 4D, which is pretty dang cool. NBT Edit is our next tool, and I will say this is getting less and less relevant with the 1.7 and 1.8 updates. Uh, pretty much what this does is it digs into the code, the NBT data, of an item or a world, and pretty much what this means is you can change a bunch of stuff about your world. You, if you have like an old world, I've used it to convert it so I will be able to use commands on it, or by the default will be creative instead of survival. Pretty much if you mess up on a world setting, you can go back and edit it in the NBT data. And yeah, as well as that, I have used it a lot to edit the items in a player's inventory. So let's say I have this signed book and I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to make a copy of this when it was written so I can go back and edit it. You can actually go into NBT data and just change the ID of it, or you can add enchantments to stuff. Pretty much you can do almost anything that you would want to do with items. You can pretty much change around anything, really. It's pretty cool to just mess around with and I would highly recommend it. 
The next tool we have is when it comes to note blocks. Note Block Studio is a program that essentially takes a bunch of notes in an area in like its own little self-contained environment and turns those into Minecraft note blocks. This is really cool if you want to say convert a song into Minecraft or if you want to actually create your own song and import that into Minecraft. It makes it a lot easier than doing the note blocks in the game, I have to say. And I've even used this in combination with MC Edit to actually import um, Pokemon music into the uh, note block editor and then from there I would import it to the world and it's pretty dang cool I have to say it's really helpful. The next thing I have here is Spritecraft. This is a tool that essentially converts an image into a Minecraft representation of that image using the blocks that are in the game. This is really, really good when it comes to wool art, and I have actually used this in my Johto map construction. Essentially what I've done is I made a schematic of the Johto region via an image that was just an overall region-wide image, and then I laid it down, and essentially from there I knew the proportions of everything, I knew where the route's boundaries were. It's really, really helpful for map makers if you're recreating something, and it would really, really help, especially since you can adjust the scale pretty widely. It can either be a one pixel representation or you can scale it down so it's like a third of the size. It's pretty cool if you want to mess around with it. This next one I am not entirely sure how to pronounce, Amidist, I assume. This program is pretty simple and that is because it only has a few simple jobs and that is to show you the biomes of the seed as well as the villages and strongholds of the seed. So essentially what this will do is it will show you any temple, it will show you any village and it's really cool if you want to explore the world that you're already in or if you want to try and find a random seed that has, I don't know, a bunch of villages pretty close together, or if you really want to find that mesa biome right next to the mushroom forest. It's pretty cool if you want to explore the world and not have to worry about what chunks are already generated, and yeah, it's pretty cool. The next tool is MC Skin Viewer, and it pretty much does exactly what it sounds like. If you type in a username, you're able to see a 3D model of any player's skin, and if you right-click it, you can actually save the skin file. And I use this pretty much all the time, especially whenever I need to make thumbnails with people that I played with. So take like the recent Battle Dome or the recent UHC events that I've been in. I had to go grab those skins, and I actually had to... Um, get those whenever I wanted to render stuff out for Cinema 4D and it's pretty easy even if you just want to grab your friend skin or if you want to grab your own skin if you accidentally lost the file on your computer it's pretty neat the second to last tool I have is the Tell Raw Coder, and this is actually my newest tool in my entire library, and I really, really wish I knew about this sooner. If you don't know what the Tell Raw command is in Minecraft, it's like the slash tell command, but it displays as complete text. No italicies, no at console sign, pretty much none of that. This tool makes it really, really easy to generate a command and even to colorize just text. It's pretty cool. I really, really didn't know how to use this command before, so this is actually really, really helpful. And if you want to display a message to players or if you want to just colorize text in commands, it's really easy to do that in this. And the final tool that I have is Minotaur, and this is actually pretty similar to Admidist. Minotaur is an overview generator that essentially shows you what has already been generated, what has already been built, which you might need instead of a view of your seed. Uh, you can pretty much view an existing world, even if it's modded, and it will show you pretty much everywhere around the world, and it even has a little slider that will allow you to click and drag and show you everything below that layer. So if you want to see what's underground, you can just slide the layer so it'll be under 60, and you'll actually be able to see where the caves are. It's pretty cool. And I actually remember using this a lot with Electrician's Journey, just trying to find dungeons. This was a really, really helpful tool doing that, and... Yeah, if you want to just find stuff around the world, it's a really easy way. At, and like I said, it's mod supported, so it's not going to crash when it notices that, oh, Minecraft doesn't have this block. But yeah, that's pretty much the suite of tools that I use when it comes to Minecraft map creation. And in general, a lot of these I do use for casual use. Like I said, um, Electrician's Journey, or if I want to make thumbnails, I can use a couple of those tools. But yeah, if you guys want to check out any of these tools, I would highly encourage all of them. All of their links will be in the description, and all of them have really, really helped me 
And yeah, they have really, really helped me in the past, and I'm sure they'll help some of you if you just go ahead and give them a try. Even if you're not a map maker, some of those still pertain to you, which will pretty much change. I know it's changed a lot of how I play and like how I do things in Minecraft. It's pretty dang cool what these tools can do. I would highly recommend any of them. Like I said, links in the description, getting redundant. I am just going to end off this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you did, give it a like and I will see you guys 